The uh, second question is, um, you have concerns about your party. They revolve around the hard line on reproductive rights. You say six-week ban, uh, abortion ban isn't going to play well. You think this issue may be a, a case of what we call uh, the dog that caught the car when it comes to uh, getting the Dobbs case and getting what it thought it wanted? Well, I, I think it could be. And I, and I saw what happened in my district. I rep represent a swing district. And what I'm trying to show the Republican Party is a path forward on how to show compassion on this issue. You can be pro-life and be pro-woman. They're not mutually exclusive. But when Roe v. Wade was overturned, when the Dobbs decision came down, Everything in the electorate changed. And I do town halls every week when I'm in the district. I listen to my constituents. I have a district where 40 percent of the electorate identify as independent voters, not Republican or Democrat. And I saw a sea change after this, where, we, where our district became mildly pro-life to being vehemently, excuse me, mildly pro-choice, excuse me, to being vehemently pro-choice. And I spoke about abortion a lot. I talk about rape and protecting women who've been raped, girls who are victims of incest, showing compassion to those who care about life, but also care about women. And that's the path forward for us. But we can't stop at talking about abortion. We've got to talk about women's health, health issues. And then what are you going to do with the babies that are born that are not wanted? What about our foster? foster care system, adoption, birth control access, all those things are things that every woman cares about, but no Republican is really talking about it. Look, all you have to do is just show the outcomes, um, show uh, the outcomes that we're already seeing about complications with pregnancies, mm -hmm. uh, women who can't get the health care that they need. Um, the data is there and it's readily available. Um, so now we have to talk about who do you think can fix this for the GOP. Ron DeSantis mm -hmm. says he can. Uh, he seems to be making his name uh, by fighting the culture wars. He calls Florida where woke comes to die. Do you think that that is the right hill uh, to take him to the top? Well, certainly anyone wanting, running for president or anyone running in a Republican primary, they want to get the, the support from the base. But that comes with a risk, and that risk is alienating the broader electorate in a general election. There's a way to balance showing and flashing your conservative credentials without alienating the independent voter, without alienating the moderate. And that's the risk of Russian roulette that he's playing today, of alienating those folks who will determine the general election outcome in 24. And look, if you look at the last couple of years in elections, and the only way that Republicans can win the White House is via the Electoral College. I'm ready for Republicans to win the popular vote. In 24, almost half of the voters are going to be Gen Z or millennials. We've got to appeal to a broader, younger generation, those that are not with us on zero or six-week bans without exceptions for rape or, or incest. I mean, we've got to appeal to a broader base within our party and across the country. But doesn't your party almost mandate that you mess uh, with the expansion of identity. Uh, I mean, you know, even you, I know you meant it as a, as a joke as you explained it, but saying, I remember when it was women that modeled women's bathing suits. Right. Um, this is like something that all you guys seem to want to play with. And I, I don't understand why, when you're talking about such a small group of people who are already so victimized, why, why play with this issue so much? What do you think it's getting you? Well, I will tell you, as a woman who's broken many glass ceilings and many barriers, being the first woman to graduate from the Citadel, the Military College of South Carolina, as you mentioned in the intro, I'm the first Republican woman elected to Congress from the state of South Carolina. It took 100 years after women's suffrage to see a woman, a Republican woman, do that. I do not want to see the achievements of women taken away by biological men. And we see this. I had Riley Gaines in my office yesterday to hear her story, how she was forced to change in a lock room with a biological male, how a medal was stripped away from her because a biological male beat her. Men are just physically stronger than women. This is happening. I hear stories from parents across the country. Now, it doesn't happen every day, all day, in every school or every classroom or every athletic sport, but it is happening. It is something that we need to curtail uh, across the country. I hear you. You are right that it is a very discreet issue, and I worry that it's being made a boogeyman. There's no question that you don't want me wrestling against your high school daughter. I, under, I understand that, um, right. and we all get it. But it also happens very, very infrequently. 
And it seems like you guys are exaggerating it for effect, which is okay. That's politics. But you do have to be but careful. It's real. And what do who you say, you're Chris, exposing to Riley Gaines? But, but what do you say to Riley Gaines? I mean, what do you say to a young woman like that who's had her achievements taken away by a biological man? It is happening. So whether it's happening to one person or a thousand, one woman or a thousand women, it still makes it wrong. Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to newsnationnow.com, newsnationnow.com, and you can find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of News Nation's fact-driven coverage.